Hey everybody, welcome back. If you've made it here, hopefully that means that you loved the first episode so much that you wanted more. (laughs) Or I suppose it can mean that you're super interested in this topic. Regardless of the reason, I am so glad that you're here. Today's episode is all about baby led weaning. Baby led what? We're going to get into all of that as well as my personal experiences introducing solid foods. So kick up your feet, unless you're driving or operating other heavy machinery. In that case, please keep your feet on the pedals and your hands at 10 and 2. Turn me up and enjoy. This is episode 2 of the J Mama podcast, Name Pending. Baby led weaning, or baby won't keep his hands off my plate, as it's affectionately known in our house, is exactly what it sounds like. It's allowing baby to take the lead when it comes to introducing solids. Exclusive breastfeeding is recommended for babies up to six months of age with continued breastfeeding along with complementary food, complementary foods up to age two. That's recommended by the World Health Organization and me, your girl, J Mama. Fun fact. Here in America, we often interpret weaning to mean transition from breast milk or formula to solids with no supplementing. But in the UK, weaning is understood to mean adding foods instead of replacing milk. I got that from babyledweaning.com. The more you know, right? I also want to add that I think it's so cute that people are hip to baby led weaning these days when black mamas and grandmamas have been saying, give that baby some real food since the beginning of time. (laughs) My son was about four or five months and I had a family member ask, is he eating real food yet? And I responded with, first of all, breast milk is real food, but no, he's not on solids. He's only five months. I'm not an expert on parenting, nor am I medically trained in any way except for an infant CPR, but I do know that solid shouldn't be introduced until at least, at least six months of age. If your pediatrician tells you otherwise, maybe, just maybe, it's time to find another doctor. There are also other signs of readiness that should be considered before introducing solid, before introducing solids. One, can baby sit up unsupported? This needs to be a straight up yes, not a kind of, not for like five seconds. No, can baby sit up unsupported? Yes, that needs to be a yes. And if you need to quantify it, I'd ask, can baby sit up unsupported for three minutes or longer? Two, has baby developed the pincer grasp, or as I call it, the pincher grasp, Because that's basically what it is. Can baby pick up items with his or her thumb and forefinger? Shoveling food into his palm using his fingers does not count. Three, does baby open her mouth when you give her food? And has baby lost the tongue thrust reflex? The tongue thrust reflex is when baby automatically pushes food out of her mouth using her tongue. Four, Is baby eager to participate at mealtime? Now, I'm not going to lie. This one tripped me up. Right around four months or so, Poppy, my son, I don't know if I ever introduced him. Well, Poppy's my son. And right around four months or so, he started putting everything into his mouth. So I thought maybe he's ready for food. Wrong. Babies put everything in their mouths. That's what they do. They're babies. This doesn't mean that they are ready for solids. Well, this alone doesn't mean that they are ready for solids. So please don't make the same mistake that I made. Five, watch baby's intestinal or digestive reactions to food. I had to learn this one on my own. Monitoring for reactions is super key. Major alert. I would have quoted DJ Khaled, but I'm really not trying to get sued. So yeah, we introduce solids at just a few days shy of Poppy turning six months. He was grabbing at my plate and chewing the air at dinner time. So I was like, oh yeah, he's ready. So we started him off with pureed foods. We started with squash in particular. 
He did fine with it when he was actually eating it, but after watching him for a few days, I noticed that he would become very squirmish and squeamish a couple hours after dinner. So I'm like, mm, maybe we shouldn't be giving him solid food. I wish I would have listened to my gut and my instinct and my mind and the internet and waited. So we stopped feeding him solids and the squirming stopped. Uh huh. His little tummy just wasn't ready until he was about six and a half months. Um, That may not seem like a long time or that it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. But when you've only been on this side of the earth for six months, two weeks is a significant amount of time. So please make sure that your baby has reached all of these milestones before introducing solids. So once we started feeding Poppy solids, we would pretty much just feed him whatever we were having for dinner. He started with veggies and then we later introduced fruits because I had read somewhere that babies often reject veggies if fruits are introduced first. Now this may not be the case with your baby, but that's just what I read and um, I didn't want him to reject the fruits. As it turns out, Poppy eats any and all foods, any and all of the time. (laughs) But if your baby isn't interested in eating solids or isn't eating the solids, don't worry and don't force it. Food before one is mostly for fun. I say mostly because there are some nutritional benefits, but most babies are fine without solids. They are fine with just breast milk until they are one year old. So a baby is not responding how you think baby should be responding to solids. Try again at the next meal or even a few days later. Trust me, that baby will eat when he or she is hungry. Um, also, when we started introducing solids, we gave him a bite here and a bite there. And we typically fed him from our utensils. Now, this is when we first started. We had utensils for him and we still have utensils for him. And we model how to use them, but I had to remember, and after the moms in my mom group told me, using utensils is a completely separate skill. So don't expect baby to master this after only a few tries. Now, we just put food in front of Poppy and we just let him go to town. We don't even worry about, um, we don't even really worry about him using utensils right now. And we don't so much worry about him getting the food in his mouth because most of it ends up on the floor anyway. <laughs> but yeah, when that baby's hungry, he or she will let you know. Poppy is now extremely vocal about when he wants to eat and will literally cry if you eat in front of him and don't share it with him. So I try not to do that. Also, in the beginning, we tried to give Poppy soft and mushy foods to try not to irritate his gums. But don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Those gums can do some serious damage. But I would stay away from hard, crunchy, stringy foods like celery. But go ahead and give that baby some crackers. He or she is going to be okay. We do, as a family, however, stay away from meat with the exception of salmon and shrimp but we also stay away from peanut butter and honey. At around nine months, which is just in a few short weeks, tear, we'll carefully introduce peanut butter and around one and a half, we'll introduce honey. That was a lot. And there's still so much that I did not cover. However, I do think that that is a pretty great introduction into baby led weaning as well as my experience with introducing solid foods. But before I wrap up, I do want to address some myths. So my top most favorite myth, myth number one, babies need solid so that they can sleep through the night. All right, let me answer this like real, real, for real, like in two parts. Number one. As a first-time mom and as a mom to an infant, I don't even want my baby to sleep through the night. I do wish he would sleep longer than two or three hours at a time, but when he wakes up, I know he's alive and well, and it gives me peace of mind. Crazy? Maybe. But that's my truth, and I'm walking in it. (laughs) Um, Number two, 
eats a lie. My son eats solids. He eats big meals. He eats little meals. But rarely does he sleep longer than three hours at a time. Well, there was this one time where he slept like five, six hours after Thanksgiving. But it didn't happen any time before Thanksgiving. And it hasn't happened since. Myth number two. Putting rice cereal in the baby's bottle doesn't count as solids. First of all, why is you putting rice cereal in that baby's bottle? And secondly, yes, it does. It counts. Myth number three, only give babies bland foods. Would you like to eat bland foods? The answer to that is probably no. So why are you giving baby bland foods? A little pepper and a little cinnamon never hurt anybody. But I do, however, try not to give Poppy any extra salt and sugar, so I would stay away from that, kind of as a general rule. But at the end of the day, I really dislike that phrase, and I don't know why I just used it. But at the end of the day, do what you feel is right for your baby, for your family, for your life, for your current situation. And if you're ever unsure, call your pediatrician. And if you don't have one, then reputable sites like who.int, the World Health Organization, and thebump.com are extremely helpful. Or you can always reach out to me. So I thank you so much for listening, and I hope that you enjoyed this podcast episode. And if you did, you can show your love by subscribing and rating me five stars. I can't wait to spend more time with you on the next episode of the J Mama podcast, name pending.